What's going on everybody, Cigar Show Tim here with Tobacco Talk Media with another edition of Tobacco Talk, where I review a cigar and then I give you my thoughts on it in four key areas. Flavor, draw, construction, and burn. It's everything you wanna know about that cigar, but it's from my pouch perspective, and then I rate it as to whether I think it's nubworthy or not. So the cigar for this review came in my August BL Luxuries box. Uh, I was gone for a couple weeks in Hawaii, on Maui, and for those of you that sent DMs and checked in and said, hey, how close are you, everything okay? Greatly appreciate it. All the comments on the video that I posted where I was and showing one of the fires, the Kihei fire in the background. Um, I appreciate everybody checking in and just making sure that things were good and um, just commenting saying that they're glad everything was good uh, for my family. Unfortunately for a lot of people in um, Maui or on Maui right now in the Lahaina area, it's, it's not a good situation. But moving on, time to put out a review now. So this is a cigar that I've had the Connecticut version, not in this format, um, but is a cigar that I have enjoyed quite a few from this line, this brand, and it is the Hoya de Nicaragua. This is the Antonio, and it is a Lancero. Yes, that's right, Lancero, seven and a half by 38. And you can see a little bit of that pigtail cap right up there. So I am looking forward to this cigar. But the only way to enjoy it and to check it out and review it is to do one thing. <laughs> Let's light it up. Okay, so I showed you just a second ago how it's got the pigtail cap that is on the cigar right here. Now these are intended to be able to just pull off and be able to light your cigar. Now when I just pulled it off, it did not give a whole lot of airspace on it. So let's do a quick draw and see if it's gonna be enough air or if I need to cut it. It is still a bit tight, so I'm gonna give it a nice straight cut here and we'll keep going. Okay, notes on the cold draw. So very typical of many, many cigars that are out there. It had dried fruit, there was some leather, there was some earth, uh, and then the dried fruit transitioned a little bit more to like a, a nice uh, sweet green grape. So let's toast her up. Okay, upon initial light up, tons and tons and tons of dark oakiness and earth. I am not a huge fan of a ton of earthiness in a cigar, so I don't know how well this cigar is gonna fare for me, but there's only one way to find out and that's to smoke through it. So I'm gonna jump into the first third. When I come back, I'll let you know the blend on the cigar, any background information that I think you might need to know and well, let you know how much I'm enjoying this Lancero. All right, let me show you the burn here at the end of the first third, pretty much straight, doing well. You can see smoke coming off the foot right there. For a Lancero, the construction is actually doing pretty well. The ash holds on for a good inch or so to an inch and a quarter, which for a Lancero is really impressive because usually a Lancero is you're lucky to get inch and a quarter, inch and a half before it just falls off all over your lap. But the construction on this is doing well. The draw is nice and open ever since I took the pigtail off. As you saw, it was still too tight. The cap didn't come off like they're usually intended to do. So I give it a straight cut. Everything's going fine with the draw on the cigar. Now the blend on this, this is a Nicaraguan Puro cigar, so all the tobaccos from Nicaragua. It's got a Nicaraguan uh, Criollo wrapper, the binder is Nicaraguan Habano, and the fillers are Nicaraguan Habano as well. So this cigar was created to really bring back um, what they were doing uh, years ago in the 60s with Nicaraguan tobacco. Spicier, um, you know, richer flavors and a cigar that is full body and full strength. So that's the intention behind this cigar. Now let's get to the flavor notes in the first third. Um, what I'm picking up on this, as soon as the initial light up was done and I got that earthiness and the oakiness, the earthiness fortunately tapered way, way down, <clears throat> which is good because I don't like a lot of earthiness, like I said. And so the um, Earthiness was there a little bit in the background, it wasn't bad. The oaky woodiness was absolutely there. And when you retrohale and on the long finish, it goes from like a nice creamy chocolate to the root beer barrel candies. And so it was a really interesting transition with that. And I can understand the pairing notes for BL Luxury says, pair it with Coca-Cola. I can understand if you've got a root beer barrel, you know, the chocolate, the root beer barrel and the Coke, all that together probably does make a really good pairing, but I pair everything uh, when I'm reviewing a cigar with just plain mineral water. It's just how I do it. So those are the flavor notes. That's the background on it. 
I'm going to go into the second third. Oh, strength on this, I would say right now is probably sitting at a medium minus, not crazy strong whatsoever, um, but it may be ramping up. We'll see. It says it's a full body and full strength cigar, so we'll see if it gets there. I'm going to jump into the second third. We'll see what happens with it. When I come back, I'll let you know any transitions in the flavor profile and anything else I think you might need to know. All right, let's wrap up this review. Here's what the cigar looks like. Here's how the burn is at the end. Just a hint of a wave right there to the burn line on it. Okay, as the cigar wrapped up, what flavor notes were there? Did it ramp up in spice? Did it ramp up in strength? Flavor notes pretty much stayed the same as the second, third. The spice kind of mellowed out a little bit. Uh, the retrohale still has some of that black pepper spice but it's not so much on the tip of my tongue. It's nowhere on my palate. It's not on the tip of my lips at all. So the spice is there, but it did come down. Only if you retrohale are you really gonna notice it though. Very nice savory notes as it rounds off though. The earthiness is completely gone. It's been gone for quite some time. The woodiness is gone. There's just a really nice um, like savory baking spice note that's in there. The root beer barrel is gone as well. So it's become much more of just like a, a savory baking spice with little hints of that uh, oaky woodiness in there. It's very, very subtle with that woodiness, but a really nice leather note came at the end of the cigar, which I really enjoyed. First third was a pretty good uh, third for me. The second third got really good. Final third was not as much of like a wowie. I enjoy the savory notes of it, but it was uh, very different than the first two thirds of it. So it was really unique how it completely shifted as the cigar was finishing up. Strength on this, I would say it ended at still a full, you know, minus. It's, it's not a full strength in my opinion, from my experience. Uh, and the draw stayed fine. Yeah, it is definitely a uh, squishy cigar at the end here with the Lancero. It's no surprise. I mean, I could take it and just squeeze right down. With it being a Lancero, with that smaller ring gauge being a 38, uh, but overall, the draw is done well, burn, you've seen all those different things. If you have had this cigar already, uh, I'm not sure how long it's been out, but if you've had the Hoya de Nicaragua, the Antonio in the Lancero, which is what this is, I'd love your take on it. Or if you enjoy what Hoya puts out, I'd love for you to put some comments as to which one is your favorite, uh, because there are a lot available from Hoya, and there are a lot that I have not tried yet, so you could actually help me out and put some comments down below. Let me know what you think I should check out from Hoya. I've had the Antonio Connecticut. I've had this one. I've had a couple others, but I would love to get your input as to which Hoya you think I should review and check out for this channel. So overall, do I think it's a noteworthy cigar? For me, because two of the three thirds were enjoyable and were really good, this is a noteworthy cigar for me. If I was going strictly off of the final third, I would not say that this is a noteworthy cigar. I'm kind of bummed that it ended the way that it did, but uh, the first third and the second third, especially that root beer barrel and the oaky woodiness and that chocolate note, that was really the bread and butter of this cigar for me. Unfortunately, none of that really stuck around in the end, but that's just how it went. So leave some comments down below. I'd love your input, but as I say every time, enjoy your cigar journey, everybody. I'm Cigar Show Tim. As always, I'll see you.